Hello, guys and girls. Uh, today, we are going to um, continue our discussion of uh, applications of parallel and perpendicular lines. <clears throat> We're kind of building up to a uh, quiz real soon, like later this week, like at the end of the week. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Um, so what we've been doing is uh, we've been working with parallel and perpendicular lines, writing equations of parallel and perpendicular lines, and then first thing I had you do is I had us work on um, perpendicular bisectors, okay? Um, then we carry that into what I had you do yesterday, the notes I wanted you to take last night, which was uh, how to use parallel and perpendicular lines to classify polygons, um, you know, other than just visually looking at it like you did in elementary school and say, yeah, that's a square or that's a rectangle. Um, now we use the concept of um, parallel and perpendicular lines, knowing what we know about the slopes of those, to mathematically classify those accurately, like providing proof, right, uh, that they are, in fact, um, you know, that I do have 90 degree angles for a rectangle, for example, instead of just by looking at it and hoping that it's a right angle, right? So um, last night, you went through the video and you completed your notes here. Um, I had you draw some figures, and then uh, we talked about the slopes of the segments so that you could classify those figures appropriately and provide proof that they were, in fact, um, you know, that polygon based on the slopes. And then, in class today, I had you do a task called What Am I? Looks like this, where you, again, kind of the same thing, just practicing what you did in your notes last night. So the first task here with MNPQ, I had you graph it and find the slopes of all of its segments. And we should have found there that uh, NP and QM, those segments were parallel. Um, but the other two sides, MN and what um, PQ, those were not parallel. Therefore, this particular figure only had one um, pair of parallel sides, so that made it a trapezoid, all right? Now, it actually did have a right angle in it as well, because you, do have, you did have two sides that were perpendicular, uh, but when you classify a trapezoid, it doesn't have, you don't have to know anything necessarily about the angles to be a trapezoid, but just for, um, if you notice that, okay, it did have a right angle in that trapezoid. All right, in the second one that you worked on, uh, I had you graph a triangle, but I wanted you to find out if it was specifically a right triangle. And in order to do that, you had to look at the um, where you thought the right angle was and determine if those two segments were perpendicular using opposite reciprocal slopes. And you should have found that BC and CA were perpendicular. Therefore, there was a right angle there at, um, I believe it was angle uh, where C, the vertex C was. Okay, so you should have found that one, that that one was, in fact, a right triangle. And then in part three, I gave you two quadrilaterals that were graphed, and I wanted you to classify them. Now, again, you can look at them and say, well, they look there, you know, they both look like parallelograms. Um, it might be a rectangle, I don't know. But to classify it, again, you had to go through and find the slopes. And we should have found out that the figure in A was, in fact, a rectangle, because not only do we have two pairs of parallel sides, we also had um, adjacent sides that were perpendicular, which made us have 90 degree angles, okay? So A was a rectangle, and B, although the opposite sides were parallel, I would had no perpendicular sides, so this one was just a parallelogram, okay? Now, what I want to focus on today is, uh, again, classifying a little more specifically. If you notice, I didn't give you any of our shapes that were squares, because for something to be a square, um, if I just use the slopes, I would use the same criteria as a rectangle because in a square, opposite sides are all parallel and then the adjacent sides are perpendicular to make a 90 degree angle, right? Um, but, because if you think about it, right, I've got a square here. Uh, these two sides would be parallel as well as these two sides and then these would be right angles. So I would have to have perpendicular sides uh, for those sides that are adjacent. But there's one more criteria for a square that a rectangle does not have. Right? And obviously a square um, has to have congruent, all, f all four sides have to be the same length, right? All four sides have to be congruent. Well, slope isn't going to tell you if they're congruent, okay? That's not going to work. Um, all slope is going to tell you is how they're slanted, okay? So what we're going to have to do to determine if it's actually a square, and this is on the back of that handout there that you have, 
in order to classify polygons as squares, yes, we have to look at the sides and make sure that we got all the we got parallel sides and perpendicular sides. But we must also prove that side lengths are congruent. Now, to do that, we are not going to get out a ruler and measure them. Okay, you're not going to have a ruler on your end of your test, and that, that's not the way we do it. We have to prove it mathematically. Okay, so let's go through this example that you have right here on your handout. I have the polygon math graphed for you, and I can see that um, it looks like a parallelogram, okay, but we're going to prove um, that it is a parallelogram by making sure opposite sides are parallel, and then we're going to check the adjacent sides to see if I have uh, perpendicular segments, in which case that would tell me that I also have right angles. So let's go through very quickly and determine our side lengths here. So I'm going to do MA first, not our side lengths, I'm sorry, our slopes. So MA... Um, if I count its slope, rise over run would be a negative 2 over 6, which would reduce to, what, negative 1 third, okay? All right, so let me erase that. And now let's look at segment. Let's do the next segment there, AT. Let me put the segment symbol there. All right, so segment AT, um, if I do the rise over the run, all right? Uh, that rise looks to be a negative 6, and the run would be a negative 2. Or I guess I should have done up and to the right. That would have been a positive 6 over a positive 2. Either way, we get the same slope, right? That's a positive sloped line of positive 3. Okay. All right, now I'm going to look at uh, segment TH right here. That's got to be a negative slope. Uh, so if I count again my rise over my run, I go down to right 6, which would be a negative 1 third. Okay. And then the last segment right here, HM, right? It's going to have a positive slope. I'm going to rise, it looks like a 6, and run 2, so its slope would be 3. Now, does that prove that this is a parallelogram. Well, it does because um, I've got slopes. If I look at opposite sides like MA and TH, they have the same slopes, right? So MA and TH right here have the same slopes. And then the, the other two sides right here, they have the same slopes as well, okay? So opposite sides are parallel. Okay, so I know it's a parallelogram. Now, to be a rectangle, I have to have right angles here. Well, that means that AT and TH should be opposite reciprocals. And if I look at um, AT and TH right here, AT and TH, I've got a positive 3 and a negative 1 third, so that angle is a right angle, right? Look at TH and HM, TH and HM right here, these two. Are those opposite reciprocals? They are, so this is a right angle, okay? And then when you look at the other two, these are uh, opposite reciprocal slopes, so that those are all right angles because I've got opposite reciprocal slopes between adjacent sides, okay? So not only is it a parallelogram, it is a rectangle because I've got right angles. Now, technically, you are yet to be able to prove that this is a, that we think this is a square. I mean, it looks like a square, um, but again, I'm not going to get out a ruler to measure the side lengths, okay? And I can't just count boxes to measure the side length because they're slanted sides, right? So what we're going to do to actually find the side length of each of the segments, let me erase this so I can fill this in, um, what we are going to do is we are going to use our favorite theorem in the entire world, Pythagorean theorem. Okay, because what the Pythagorean theorem does is it will tell us the side length of a slanted segment on a grid like this. Basically, it tells you the distance between two points, right? So um, I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem four times because you've got to prove that each of these segments is exactly the same in length, okay? So here we go. Let's start out with segment MA. All right, so segment MA, in order to determine the side length, what I have to do is I, I'm going to use segment MA as my hypotenuse of a right triangle that I am going to graph here on the side. And I'm going to color it in so you can see it. All right. So I'm drawing that right triangle there. And I'm going to use segment MA as my hypotenuse. Okay. 
So remember the Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where C is your hypotenuse. Well, in this case, MA, that segment, is going to be my hypotenuse, all right? So what I'm going to put in place of the legs are the legs of my right triangle that I colored in here, which this should be 6 and this should be 2, okay? So it would be um, 6 squared plus 2 squared would equal my hypotenuse, and I'm going to put MA segment squared. Now, I know that looks kind of weird. We're not literally squaring M and squaring A. What I want you to know is that what we're doing there is saying that the length of MA squared should be equal to 6 squared plus 2 squared, okay? So now we are going to calculate that. That would be 36 plus 4 would equal my hypotenuse squared, which would be 40 equals my hypotenuse squared. And then to figure out just the length of segment MA without the square, what do we do? Well, yeah, we square root both sides here. All right, so now what you found out is that the square root of 40 is equal to segment MA. Because basically when you square rooted it, you got rid of the square over there, right? And if you wanted to simplify that up, 40 is, um, what, 4 times 10, which would be 2 square roots of 10, okay? So MA is equal to 2 square roots of 10. That's what you just found out, okay? That's its length in units on the grid, okay? Now, we've got to do that four more or three more times. We've got to do that for each of our segments, okay? So let's go to the next segment. We'll draw a triangle on segment, um, or we do a segment AT. I've kind of covered up my A, but I'm going to draw me a right triangle here, okay? And I'm going to use AT as my hypotenuse. So this would be, let's, let me count here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six again, and two there, okay? So my right, the legs of my right triangle are 6 and 2, so I do 6 squared plus 2 squared equals. And this time I'm finding the segment length AT, so I'm going to do segment AT squared, all right? So 36 and 4 equals AT squared. And you get the idea of what's happening here. I'm going to get the same thing, aren't I? 40 equals AT squared. And then when I square root, we're going to get the square root of 40 is equal to segment AT which again reduces to two square roots of 10. Okay, so so far I know that those two segments have the same length. Okay, they're exact, they're both two square roots of 10 units or square root of 40 units, same thing. Okay, now we have to do the next segment. Okay, the next segment would be TH. All right, so again, I'm going to draw me a right triangle here from T to H. And I'm going to count the length of my uh, legs of my right triangle. And if you count there, you would get six here and two here. Do you see a pattern developing? Again, yeah, when I do Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to get six squared plus two squared equals. And our segment this time is TH. Okay. Let me erase this. And really, we could go through this very quickly now, right? Because we know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm seeing a pattern developing here. All right, so 40 is equal to TH squared. If I square root all of that, I'm just going to go ahead and simplify it to 2 square roots of 10 is segment TH. Okay, so there's that one. So now I know that this side, this side, and this side on my diagram are all the same length. They're all measured 2 square roots of 10. One more side to check, right? This side right here, segment HM. Draw me a right triangle on the end. Okay, count the length of the legs, which are again 6 and 2. So 6 squared plus 2 squared equals segment HM squared. 36 and 4 equals HM squared. And 40 is equal to HM squared. And now we're going to square root. And we get that the length of segment HM is 2 square roots of 10. It's easy, fourth time you do it, isn't it? All right. So I went through all that to prove that in order to make, to tell me that um, something, a polygon is in fact a square, you have to show me mathematically that all the sides are the same length, okay? So right on the next bullet where it says write a statement including your findings that proves the polygon is a square, what I'm going to say is, um, I'm going to write opposite sides are parallel. 
because that has to be true about a square. I'm going to say adjacent sides, adjacent segments, okay, are perpendicular. That's important because that tells me that I have 90 degree angles, right? And then I'm going to say all sides, all sides or segments, all sides are the same length, which you can't say about a rectangle, right? Our same length of, and let's be specific here, what are all of their lengths? All of their lengths are 2 square roots of 10 units. Okay? So opposite sides are parallel, adjacent sides are perpendicular, but more specifically, um, we know all the side lengths are the same. Now, we're going to take this a step further tomorrow, because if you look at your handout here, so it talks about perimeter of polygons. We haven't done perimeter yet, right? But we're going to take it that far tomorrow. Okay, um, but for today, I just want to get you to make sure you get these notes finished up because what I wanted to show you today is that yes, I can I use Pythagorean theorem to find the length of a segment um, on a coordinate grid, which helps us prove um, our polygons more specifically instead of just looking at slopes. Now we can look at their side lengths, all right, and now we can actually prove that something is a square. Okay, but I wanted to show you also um, that a little key that tomorrow when we get into perimeter, I wanted to show you a little shortcut that you may want to use whenever you're finding the distance on a grid. Like up here, we did Pythagorean theorem four times, right? Which is fine. But there is a formula that you could use uh, called the distance formula, which is basically the same thing as the Pythagorean theorem. It just, to me, it makes it look way more complicated. And honestly, I'm, I don't even memorize the distance formula. I just use Pythagorean theorem over and over and over again. But if, you, if you're one of person that likes to memorize formulas, then you could do this. But let me show you how it's connected to the uh, Pythagorean theorem, something you're already familiar with. Okay, so in every right triangle, right, our legs are A and B here, and we call our hypotenuse C. You know that, and you know the formula is A squared plus B squared. I take my two legs and square them, and I get my hypotenuse squared. Now, let's say, uh, think of this as a literal equation. If you just wanted to get C by itself, if you just wanted to rearrange the formula that said, all right, um, how, how can I write me a formula that just says, if I do, to find C, just do this stuff? Well, all you do is, think about it, right now, all you, you would have to do is get rid of the square on C, which means you would need to square root it, and then you would have C by itself, which means you would need to square root the other side of the equation as well, because what you do to one side to do to the other. So we end up with this uh, formula that says, if I take the square root of the sum of a squared and b squared, it will equal the high, it will equal the actual length of the hypotenuse. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a um, right triangle, and you know that the legs are three and four, and you wanted to know the hypotenuse. Well, what you could do is I could just take this formula that says to find c, take the square root of the sum of three squared and four squared. Now, you have to do what's in parentheses or what's underneath the radical before you take the square root. You don't take the square root of 3 squared. It doesn't work that way. You do all of this first, and then you take the square root of that answer. So I, that would be, what, 9 plus 16? So I would have the square root of 9 plus 16. So I would have the square root of 25, which would mean that this uh, hypotenuse would be 5. Okay, that's just a, a shorter way of doing Pythagorean theorem. But the point is that if you use this idea right here, on a coordinate grid, you create the that you create what we call the distance formula, because to find let me come back to my picture here, label it A and B, okay, and C. All right, to find this distance A on the coordinate plane, okay, what you're really doing is you're taking these two endpoints of the slanted segment, okay, and to find this distance A, you're basically taking the I call this x1, y1, and I call this point x2, y2. To find this horizontal distance, you're finding it's basically the difference between the x's, okay, of your hypotenuse. So I would take my x's and I would subtract them, okay? That's what this distance right here gives me, okay? Um, and then to find my vertical distance, I take my two endpoints, x1, y1, and x2, y2, and to find this distance b, you're 
finding the difference between your y's. Y1, oops, minus y sub 2. Okay? So this is basically a and b. That's what that is. Now, Pythagorean theorem, though, says, look at this formula you just created. It says, well, if I add, if I find the difference, square them, add them together, and then square root it, that will give me the distance of the hypotenuse. So that is the distance formula right there. The square root of the difference between your x's of your endpoints squared added to the difference between your y's of your endpoints squared. Okay. Now, again, to me, that just looks way more complicated than if I just, just used old Pythagorean theorem. So I'll probably continue to use Pythagorean theorem, but if you like, if you're a formula person, feel free to use the distance formula. But all it is is a fancy way of writing the Pythagorean theorem with using coordinates on a grid. Okay? All right. So what I want you to do is make sure all these notes are finished up, and then that way when you come back tomorrow, we're actually going to... I'm going to give you some polygons, and we're actually going to use the Pythagorean theorem slash distance formula to now find perimeters of these polygons. Okay, so that's was, this was kind of the introduction to that. All right, so make sure all that is completed, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.